I mean, here I am, like, uh, trying to be a loving advocate of the planet, making poetic paintings that that will hopefully teach other people to 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 see and to love. Um, and I'm I'm upset with my neighbor because he won't cut down his uh, his ash trees that are blocking my view of the mountain. I mean, how how contradictory is that? You know, I'm just like every other plant person on this planet, wanting a view, you know, of their domain. <laughs> that hadn't been all gussied up and uh, where I could, uh, you know, I could reconnect with the aura of the past, the living past. Um, you know, I, as you, if you look around the kitchen there, I, I like it really spare and, and stark. There's very little plastic. It's all wood or stone or metal, you know, the elements of the earth. I'm such a visual person that when I set up a room, I don't necessarily furnish it for comfort. I, I furnish it because of juxtapositions of color or shape or form. So throughout the rest of the house, it's, the rooms are, are, they look gorgeous, but they're more designed for looking, like almost like a museum, whereas this room, I, I have really, I, I've struggled the most to make it comfortable. Artists, in particular, have always been environmentalists. Environmentalists are, it's not something new. It, it's, it's anybody who is keenly in tune and aware of their of their natural environments, people who who cherish nature all four seasons of the year don't try to escape it. People who who love the earth and 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 see the earth and the sky very well. In the same way that I explore the the woods here and and crawl around uh, beautiful 18th century stone cellar holes, I was doing the same thing in Philadelphia. But it was it was, I mean. I was painting these factories that were under major litigation for thick waste oil that was being dumped into the, the lower Schuylkill. And I was doing paintings of that. The Greenfield Bank erected this ATM that was housed in a tree. They simulated a big rotten, gigantic tree trunk with bracket fungus. It was just extraordinary. Only in America would this occur, you know, right next to the ATM tree housed in the uh, in the tree was the dollar store. So there was just all these strange contradictions. I mean, how 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 extraordinary that here when we're there's issues of, of depleting the rainforest and uh, over deforestation that a there would be this glorified symbol of a tree encasing a bank machine. Have you ever seen these tubular playlands? Did you ever play in them as kids? Well, literally, t I mean, try painting one of those. I, I think that, that actually when you, next time you drive by and you look at those tubular playlands, I think they look like big, I mean, this is a rather graphic description, but I think they look like big, uh, you know, cancerous colons. That's what it means to, to stand up as an environmentalist, as a painter, to find beauty in the, in, in the most unlikely places. And when I paint Walmart, it's, it's really to find, it's, it's to integrate it into the, into the natural environment. I think environmentalists are too often to be uh, so negative and ruthless. Certainly a, a, an artist's job is to is to be a Pied Piper to get people not only to look, but to find beauty, even in the most wrecked up places on the planet. You know, because that's where we live. You know, like I said, I, I feel a little guilty living up here, but I don't turn my back from the world. I, I come up here to, because I, I love to garden and, and, uh, and I, uh, I, 
it, it helps me get centered. But I go, I go down into Dante's Inferno and, and paint with, I'm thoroughly committed to, to painting the, the, the world. I am. Come on, boys. Puppies for sale! Puppies for sale! <laughs> the ferocious. Ten guineas apiece. They make great stew. Or you could barbecue them as well. No way, they're my babies. I born and raised these guys from my own hips. I did. 